Okay, I want to walk us through um, how to calculate a royalty and in working interest. Now, this is going to be helpful to you if you are a royalty interest owner and you're trying to figure out how the oil and gas companies calculate those crazy decimals, or if you work for one of those oil and gas companies and you just need a better understanding of how uh, royalty and working interests are calculated. So we'll start with a couple of basic definitions. And one is that the landowner, the landowner is also known as the lessor, and you will frequently hear them referred to as lessor. So I want you to understand the terms lessor, kind of rhymes with landowner, it's one easy way to remember it. And then oil and gas company is also known as the lessee. So company rhymes with lessee. That's an easy way to remember it. So we're going to look at what the royalty calculation and working interest calculation would be in an oil and gas lease before we took the lease and then after we took the lease. And of course, this all depends on what the royalty interest is or what the royalty fraction is. Some other terminologies that I want you to understand is working interest. The working interest owner is the person that pays the expenses. So who is responsible for the expenses? And then the net revenue interest is what the revenues are. So we're going to look at that for before a lease and after a lease. Now, to, in order to understand a royalty calculation, you really have to understand the basics of what we call the grand bargain. And the grand bargain in the law See if I can write that down. The grand bargain in the law basically says that the lessor, before there is an oil and gas lease, owns a 100% working interest and a 100% net revenue interest in the oil and gas lease. So, why would a lessor then give an oil and gas company 100% of their working interest and only keep a small percentage of the revenue? In most cases, it's, uh, in the early leases, it was like a, a one-eighth royalty, for example. And the reason is that it is expensive to drill an oil and gas well. In fact, it is, for most people, cost prohibitive, and that is that an oil and gas well can cost you a million dollars and up easily. And then it can get more expensive, the more work and rework you have to have on it. So most landowners or royalty owners say, okay, oil and gas company, since we're going to use a one-eighth royalty, I'm going to do a rough drawing. Please excuse my uh, rough drawing. <clears throat> and this is going to be one-eighth. All right, so right now the lessor owns 100%, so they own 8 eighths, and they also own 8 eighths of the net revenue interest. The lessee, before the lease, owns 0% of the working interest and 0% of the net revenue interest. So the lessor says, oil and gas company, I will give you 100% of my working interest in exchange for a royalty fraction. So in this case, we'll use an example, one-eighth. So I'm going to give you one-eighth. So after the lease, the lessor is going to own zero working interest, and they're going to own a one-eighth net revenue interest. So they're entitled to a one-eighth royalty. So what does the lessee then own after the lease? Well, one-eighth is gone to the lessor. And the oil and gas company is going to get 100% of the working interest and 7 eighths with the lessor getting this 1 eighth interest. Okay, so that's a pretty easy calculation. 1 eighth and, you know, the decimal for that is uh, 0.125 and the decimal for this is 0.0875. And I'm going to do a separate calculation for you so you'll know, I'm sorry, not 0 0.08, an 875. Let me correct that. A 
okay? And that should total to 100. And we know the fractions do because 1 8 plus 7 8 is going to be 8 8 or 100. Okay, so that is if it is a 1 8 royalty. But now more common these days, we see something like a 3 16 royalty. So let's do the calculation on a 3 16 royalty. So again, before the lease, the lessor owns zero, the lessor owns 100% of the working interest and net revenue interest. Now we're going to say, okay, instead of a 1 8 royalty, we're going to give you a 3 16 royalty. So let's write out 3 16 and let me show you what that looks like. So now I'm going to divide these 8s in half to get 16 okay, and we're going to pretend like these are all equally, you know, uh, this is a, like a perfect rectangle, <clears throat> and all of these pieces are even. So now, instead of the 1 8 royalty, we're going to actually get a 3 16 royalty. So remember, the 1 8 was this, and now we're going to get 1 8 and a half of another 8. So you can see it's just slightly bigger than a 1 8 interest. So the lessor's interest is going to be zero working interest after the lease, and the net revenue interest is going to be 3 16 And that means the lessee is going to have 100% after the lease, and their net revenue interest is going to be 13 16 And we know this calculates to a A point one eight seven five and the thirteenth sixteenth calculates to a point eight one two five. And we know that's going to equal a hundred and that's going to equal a hundred. And we can keep doing this. We can do it with fourths, you know, and that means the lessor would own one fourth and the lessee would own three fourths. We could do it with fifths. One owns one fifth. The remaining four fifths belongs to the oil and gas company. So that this works great if the lessor owns 100% of the property. But what gets more complicated is, um, let's say that the landowner owns. It's going to be a section. The landowner owns in the northeast quarter. I'm sorry, the northwest quarter. That's going to be 160 acres, okay? But the whole section is 640 acres. So if they have to pool the lands, in other words, the oil and gas, the State Conservation Commission, in Texas it's the Texas Railroad Commission, in Oklahoma it's the Oklahoma Corporation Commission, in Louisiana it's the Department of Con Conservation. If they say, okay, you can only have one well, only one well per 640 acres. Let's say it's a gas well, okay? And the lessor only owns one, one, one quarter of that. So we're going to have to pool all these other owners, all right? And because all of these owners are included in the well, we're not going to get a 3 16 or a 0 0.125. What we're going to get is our total net acres divided by the total unit acres. In this case, it's going to be 640 times, let's say, the 1 8 interest. Okay? And in this case, we know that 160 here is 1 4th of 640. So I'm going to really simplify my math and go 1 4th times 1 8. And that is going to equal to 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 8 is 32. So that's going to be a 1 32nd interest. And so we know that that calculation is 0 0.03125. Sorry, I went off the, the map there. <coughs> But that is what the landowner's 
decimal is going to be if they are only part of a unit. We're going to basically take their net acres divided by the unit acres times the royalty interest and that's going to give us the lessor's net revenue interest. So I hope to be doing more of these and uh, I'll just keep adding them to my website. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation.